Ryan Johnson cannot properly defend Star Wars The Last Jedi. You know why? Because for the past few months since its release in December of 2017, and today is June uh, 16th at 9 o'clock at night, he has been, A, taking pot shots at the critics, who are not only fans, but actual critics. Two, made extremely huge straw man arguments and bringing in events like Gamergate that have absolutely no bearing on the conversation at all. Three, repeating Ghostbusters 2016 in the worst way possible. Okay? Now, what evidence do I have to support these claims? Oh, no, you just hated The Last Jedi. You're just making a bunch of video on Ryan Johnson because he's so much better than you. No, 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 no. No. I have the evidence. All right? It's everywhere on the internet. All right? There's one man in particular that has most of the videos on this thing, though. Monday, Matt, Matt Jarbo. A lot of good videos on what Ryan Johnson has been doing to, you know, detail his defense, so to speak, which he hasn't done really well. Like, he tried trolling a bunch of the original trilogy fans by using an Expanded Universe book from before Disney decanonized everything. So, there's that that whole thing. He's been taking, like I said, he's been taking pot shots at almost everyone on social media. His Twitter is just awful. Okay, you, if, if you've seen that asshole tweet, you know what I'm talking about. Where it's like, it's like it, I'm blocking assholes and it feels so good. So I'm just like... Okay, man, you obviously don't care about a nice, genuine conversation. Even if it does get a little heated, you still don't care about having an actual conversation with people. And the only person he has managed to get a conversation out of is this guy on Twitter called uh, Synchroni Synchroni uh, Synchronic Design, who, you know, detailed the differences between George Lucas and Ryan Johnson and got the only respectable defense that Ryan Johnson has actually gotten from this movie, okay? He has not actually said really much about it. All he's been doing is making straw man arguments and taking pot shots at people. But the only detailed argument he's actually made for the film was that it was his vision, not George Lucas's, and that was it. That was it. That's honestly, that was it. I can respect that, but I completely disagree with what he said. But at least somebody got an answer out of him. All right, and we should be talking about that. But Ryan Johnson cannot defend The Last Jedi very well. He cannot defend his own work very well. Okay? It's just, uh, it's irritating that a Hollywood direct, Hollywood director, Hollywood director that has, you know, been under so much heat has been, you know, massively defended by everybody that loved the movie or, you know, just like, no, we got to stand up to the toxic fan, toxic fan base, but it's like, no, most of the people that attack Ryan Johnson, not really attack per se, but like, you know, criticize him, make detailed hour-long videos, movies, for Christ's sake, like Mahler, to, you know, show just how much they do not like this work and do it in a respectful manner. Okay, yeah, a lot of people get heated and they say fuck you and all that shit, but everybody says fuck you and all that shit. I say fuck you and all that shit. Everybody else says fuck you and all that shit. So why should that be, you know, something that is apparently taboo or something like that? I don't know. But anyway... This whole thing with Ryan Johnson is just terrible. Alright. Now, he might be a nice guy personally, but based on everything that I've seen him, you know, seen him say, I don't perceive him as a particularly nice guy if he's just going to be an all-around dick on social media. Okay, I've responded to him a couple times, actually. Like, I freaking uh, tweeted a link to the Stain song wannabe because that's honestly what I think Ryan Johnson is, is a wannabe. He's a wannabe George Lucas. He thinks he's doing something so great for Star Wars. Like, he's like, oh, radically changing the formula of Star Wars is going to propel it into the future, even though it didn't need a formula change per se. Just all we needed was a story set in the universe in a different area, which is what he's going to do with his new trilogy but considering that he was the one who picked up on The Last Jedi and then did so many things to change the definition of, say, the Force, completely destroy the character of Luke Skywalker for, like, a, and then only get, like, a tiny little fragment of his character to come back towards the end of the movie. And, you know, doing a whole bunch of things in the film that would not make sense not only in-universe but in actual science itself, like, you know, the, uh... <clears throat> This, the uh, mortar cannons that 
the, for some reason the first first order has that works like a mortar cannon in space. Like basically that's like a it's like a wraith from Halo. Only it's it only it act only it doesn't go shooting up in the air like you think it would. Like just straight, it actually mortars. It goes up and then down to hit something, which is retarded. And you know the you know the infamous Leia scene and the. Yoda puppet scene with the lightning strike. Okay. And a lot of people really do... And honestly, I think a lot of people would have forgiven The Last Jedi if they had taken good care of the characters. If he and his writing team had taken good care of the characters, I don't really think there would, people would be as mad about the logical flaws that the movie has. And it has tons of logical flaws. And it has tons of continuity errors. And all that stuff. I can go into it in my review. I'm done keeping quiet on my thoughts about The Last Jedi. I think it's a bad film. I think it's a bad film not only as a Star Wars film, but as a film by its, on its own, right? And when it can't stand up on its own, it's not great. Like, it's not, and especially if it's for something as big and powerful as the Star Wars franchise. And I can go into detail on everything about Star Wars and its decline for the, the last few years, at least in regards to the fan base. But... I just, it's just, I just don't understand what's going through Ryan Johnson's head all the time. It's like, it's like, he just wants to either troll people or just be a dick. And he does both. Okay, but when he has actual, quote unquote, civil discussions, it's about stuff like Gamergate. Okay, <laughs> and this actually prompted Anita Sarkeesian to jump to Ryan Johnson's defense when Matt Jarbo was like calling for a discussion on Gamergate, which Ryan, of course, didn't respond to that, but Ryan did take up on Anita. He was, you know, I, I, I think Anita and Ryan got a little cahoots to do with, but uh, yeah, so it's just like, I don't, I don't see what you're getting at, Ryan. Defend your film. I have seen no logical arguments. Taking an extended universe book that has been decanonized, like, look, it's decanonized. Out the window. That's not canon anymore. Yeah, you can bring it into the canon, but you already made your movie. Okay? Unless you retcon it, which, of course, almost never works. Retconning is not a good thing to have in a film, especially the Star Wars film, when it has to have logical consistency. Yes, it's not the most logically consistent thing in the world. Far from it. But it's a hell of a lot better than most of the things we have today, like Transformers and all that bullshit, right? And then actually, and the Star Wars the original Star Wars trilogy had a lot of good flowing continuity with the logic and stuff. It's just the prequels threw all of that out of whack. That's just which is why I think the continuity and errors in Star Wars have become ever widening over the years. And the in the uh, new movies, particularly Rogue One and The Last Jedi, kind of show continuity as like. As like a bag of dead cats, if you know what I mean. It's just like I can go into that later. But the big thing with Rogue One was that, you know, Princess Leia wasn't at the battle to get the Death Star plans. It was she was being the transmissions. If you listen, right, the big that's a big continuity error. I don't care if you like Rogue One or not. I thought Rogue One was a decent movie for itself on its own right. But like Red Letter Media said. It's just, uh, it's got too many flaws and cannot really stand up on its own without a new hope to prop it up, which is bad. That's not good for a movie. Alright, if it's going to be a prequel, it has to be able to stand up on its own without other films. That's the whole problem. That's one of the big problems with the prequels. But it is, but it is different. It can stand on its own in some ways, but not a lot because it uses so much imagery and things from... The original trilogy top that off it works like the original trilogy but in reverse so there's that whole thing but at least when George Lucas was you know at the helm of Star Wars he still had some he had a lot of dignity when it came to like how the fan how he reacted to the fans all right and that but then when the prequels came around he was the guy who kind of started like you know fan wars with the fandom because of stuff like Jar Jar Banks. He's like, oh no, I love Jar Jar. Jar Jar's such a good thing. He's supposed to be like the big, uh, big important character and stuff like that. And it's like, he just loved 
he loved Jar Jar, but uh, it was terrible in execu- Jar Jar was terrible in execution because you, they made him to the, the comic relief who does absolutely nothing through the story of his own volition by and it's all by accident. And then when fans got, I mean, one of the big critiques from not only critics but fans came out that Jar Jar was one of the worst things about the movie. He's like, fuck you guys. And that's what he does in the Attack of the Clones. Emergency powers to Chancellor Palpatine. So that's like that. Yeah, I'm going on a little bit of a tangent. I'm just trying to make a comparison between George Lucas and Ryan Johnson and J.J. Abrams. Well, not really J.J. Abrams, but... Yeah, we can get an Abrams later. But... <clears throat> yeah, you put Jar Jar there as a big fuck you to the audience. He's like, oh, you thought he did bad stuff in Phantom Menace? Pfft, look what he did. He gave, he gave Emperor Palpatine emergency powers. Woohoo! And then in episode three, he only got like two scenes where he was actually in there. He didn't talk or anything like that, which is good. But like Plinkett said in his review, he just put Jar Jar in there as a big fuck you to the audience for not, you know, accepting Jar Jar. But so like for some of the stuff George Lucas did, he deserved whatever criticism he got. Now, I don't I don't condone personal attacks. Okay, personal attacks are not a good thing like the Kelly Marie trans stuff. Which Ryan Johnson also kind of conflated with the entire hate of Star Wars, but George Lucas was one of those guys who just went at war with the fandom over st- stupid shit in the prequels, and that caused a lot of people to lose faith in what George Lucas had to offer with the Star Wars prequels and all that stuff. And by Episode Three, he lost his touch. No matter how much people think that, no matter how much how well you think he executed Episode Three and how much how well it could have been done, you know, Episode Three, while I think was better than the other two films, the first two films ruined it. If it was a film by itself, maybe it could have worked, maybe, but because things were so haphazardly thrown around in the Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones. Empire failed as a result, and that kind of screwed Lucas's empire. And then he had only two bright spots, which was the Clone Wars and the Clone Wars, the two part, two volume Clone Wars animated show, and then the Cartoon Network Clone Wars animated show. And those were the only, those were the things that actually helped rel- revolutionize the prequels, and also the video games really helped it a lot. It helped relevant, made them relevant, even if you don't like it. I mean, at least. You had some good stories from that era. You had some things that were just that were good, like Star Wars Battlefront Two. We never gonna have gotten that. Kotor wasn't set in the prequels prequel setting, but it was. If we didn't have the prequels, uh, Kotor may never have been made. Stuff like that. So you can, but you can take the good and the bad. But the thing with Ryan Johnson is, he inhabit inhibited what was the worst aspects of George Lucas in the prequels. He disregarded a lot of what the fan base wanted. He assumed that all the fan base wants is lasers, explosions, deep subtext, no matter how ham-fisted it is, and he expects us all to eat it up. And if you hate and if you hate it, then you're a racist, sexist, bigot, homophobe, blah, 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 Which is, you know... Dumb. I don't want any of that stuff. I want a good character-driven story, and that's not what I, what I've personally gotten out of the Last Jedi. That's not what I personally got out of the prequels. No matter how many times I rewatched them and say I liked them when I was a kid and when I was a teenager, and no, it's still a teenager, but it it doesn't age well. All right, the Last Jedi aged incredibly badly compared to. The prequels. The prequels started off like super well loved. Like a, everybody in Star Wars loved it, but when but the critic reviews were not very great, even though that the critic reviews for the original trilogy were pretty good. And over time, the fans started to lose faith in the prequels, especially by the time uh, Attack of the Clones came around, which was the worst one of the worst films ever made. I I contend contend that. That film is the worst film ever made. But then... But, uh... Yeah, but yeah. Tiger Clones was the worst film ever made. One of the worst films ever made. Damn it, I, I lost track of what I was trying to say, but yeah. And then, uh... And then by the time Plinkett... Plinkett's reviews came out on Red Letter Media... 
and after you know Revenge of the Sith was released and all that stuff was done with, the prequel just sank to just a really low level, and George Lucas did not do a great job of defending it. It was his vision, though. He was still the creator. He was the guy who made it. It wasn't perfect, but he had something in it. It at least tied into A New Hope in some way. It wasn't the worst thing in the world, but it could have been handled a lot better, but I can un completely understand why a lot of people do not recognize the prequels as Star Wars, and it, it's fit. But... The Last Jedi, it, it gave, like uh, one of the guys said on Red Letter Media and Half of the Bag, it gave me free prequel flashbacks. Just to, like, everything was just style over substance, piss poor storytelling, abandonment of universal rules slash prior rules set in the setting, uh, and the uh, complete bullshitting of the Force. And at least George had the effort to say that, yeah, I kind of went too far. I kind of fucked up there. I, I wish I had somebody telling somebody in my ear telling me what to do. He admits he fucked up. Okay, kind of like with Joel Schumacher. He, he, with Batman and Robin, like, legitimately probably the worst film ever made. He took, he took ownership of that movie. He's like, it wasn't completely his fault. I actually blame a lot of what happened with Batman and Robin on Warner Brothers based on what I've read and what I've heard. But, I mean, he took he took credit for it. He took the blame. And that's honestly, that gives me a level of respect for the guy. Even if you don't like Schumacher movies, I mean, you can at least respect that. He's like, you know, I, this was my bad. I was the director. I fucked up. I should have realized what was going on. Okay. That's something you can respect. But Ryan Johnson has really done nothing of the sort. He hasn't really apologized. You know, of course he shouldn't, because there's nothing really to apologize for. Okay, because he's not George Lucas. He's just a random guy who came in and was told to do whatever the fuck he wanted with the movie. And that's not completely his fault. If Kathleen Kennedy had actually been walking over, looking over his soldier, shoulder like she did with the Phil Lord and Christopher Miller. I think it's Christopher Miller, yeah. For the who were the guys who were directing Solo before they were fired unceremoniously for wanting to make it like a comedy or something, which honestly I would have been completely fine with if they just made Han a cynic. That would have been the best thing, but you know, whatever. But if they but if he had Kathleen Kennedy looking over his shoulder and some guy working on continuity or Bob Iger telling him, "Hey, don't do some stupid bullshit." I think the last year I could have ended up a lot better, but they led him to his own devices. And you know what a director does when left to their own devices? They're going to do whatever the fuck they want to do. Okay? Now, this wasn't like John Carpenter's The Thing, where they gave the director almost complete control and have, like, the producers helping him out with it to make the, the thing from 1982 what it was, which was one of the best films ever made. But they left him just to his own devices and didn't bother checking on him. They didn't bother doing much of that at all, all right? There's a lot of stuff that was just used in there for marketing ploys, bullshit political messages, and like I said, you know, bad continuity errors. Mahler suggested that in his review, uh, in his critique of The Last Jedi, that Ryan John, that Disney actually hire like someone who's a specialist in the lore of the saga, or at least a co-writer, who shared his goals, because there's a lot of bad dialogue in The Last Jedi, and I think Ryan really did need to proofread. I think he half-assed it, just like George did with The Phantom Menace. He just walked out of the room with the script and said, we got a script! Woohoo! And everybody's clapping around him. So it's just like... But Ryan Johnson hasn't said that that's what he, what he was doing. All he said was that I was given total creative control. They had no set plan past episode 7. Even though they set all these things up. So they gave it to me, and I said, you know, fuck it. Everything's, everything is stupid. No, I don't care. I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to take all your toys that you left me, left me, and I'm going to kick it. I'm going to kick it on the ground. I'm going to curb stomp it like Isaac Clark. Like that. Without the, without the screaming. But yeah, that's essentially what Ryan Johnson did, and he should be held accountable for it. But, of course, that's not going to happen because he has a bunch of Disney critics praising him for it, a bunch of uh, directors praising him for it, a bunch of writers praising him for it, and a bunch of fans praising him for it. But they're not trying to hold him accountable for the bullshit he said. 
And that's bad, okay? This is like the whole thing with Donald Trump. I wish people, I wish conservatives would like hold him accountable for the shit he says because he said a lo- says a lot of stupid shit. But more and more it seems that the people just don't care and they're just willing to let him do whatever the fuck he wants. And I think that's what a lot of people are trying to, are do, letting Ryan Johnson do, just letting him say, hey, dude, do whatever the fuck you want. Again. And... Honestly, it's just going to lead to more division, okay? He's exacerbating the issue. He's been exacerbating the issue ever since the movie released, ever since the Rotten Tomatoes uh, audience score leaked. Well, not really leaked, but was released and has sank lower and lower as a result. All right, and this has led to the division in the fan base. You know, people like me who just want to have a discussion and just say, hey, I don't like the film, but you like the film. Let's come together and have a discussion, okay? I haven't been the greatest arbiter of that. I kind of was in the middle at first, and then I went to the extreme right, and I was at the left for a little bit, but I was like, fuck it. And I got to the point where I was just like really seething with rage at one point, and I still kind of am, but I've kind of calmed down from that. But I can't really have a conversation with anybody if the people who made the film are going to keep acting like douchebags, and those people who like the film are going to defend them no matter what because a couple of toxic fans are being retarded. All right, there's toxic fans on both sides, okay? Okay, I, if you are a, are a rabid fan who will go to a Star Wars event no matter what, that means you have no critical uh, comprehension of Star Wars. Okay, that me- you really don't. Because if you just walk into it, watch Laser Explosions, and that's it, then, you're in, then you have no sympathy for me. Right, if you go into the film wanting a character-driven experience while you like the lasers and explosions, you actually want a good story, and you think maybe it was a good movie, maybe it wasn't, and you happen to like it a little bit more than you don't, then I want to have a debate with you to, you know, clarify our feelings on it and try to see how we can mend the fan base. But it's not going to happen if Ryan Johnson is just going to keep exacerbating the issue and blaming things that only a that are, A, not relevant in the conversation at all because it happened in 2014, and B, acting like a complete douchebag. So, uh... Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little uh, thing about me ranting a little bit about Ryan Johnson. And, you know, if you don't see this, hey, I'm sorry for calling you a dick. Okay, I am. All right, I'm sorry for calling you a dick. But, if you're act- but you're acting like a dick. Okay? Same thing, I, this is the same thing I say about Jen Brown and all those stupid people that Rooster Teeth keep on saying stupid shit all the time on Twitter because they, say, because they can. And Donald Trump, too. Yeah, I'm going to come fight them because I can. But if you're going to go out there and say stupid shit on Twitter all the time, then, and you're not going to actually take responsibility for the stuff you say, even if it helps lead to a splitting fan base that keeps on splitting and splitting and splitting, then you need a wake-up call. Okay. All right. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Thumbs down.